Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about population variability analysis PVA in conservation biology. PVA is a species specific method of risk assessment using mathematical and statistical analysis to predict probability of population or species going to extinct at some point in future. Some species may extinct um, because of various conditions. Some cannot adapt to changes in its environment or to new predators or new disease. Catastrophes such as fire, flood, drop or epidemic may reduce population size to a small fraction of their average level which may result to extinct of organism. A method of predict predicting whether or not a particular given species will persist in a specific environment. By this method, we can predict whether or not this species will survive in a certain environment, whether or not it can adapt to the changing environment, like these things are studied. Your analysis is also done to all the possible factors affecting survival of a species. All the factors such as habitat, food, mating partners, all these things are analyzed which affect the survival of a species. It is generated by computer simulation programming. A species requirement and resources availability in its environment and threat that affect the life cycle are identified. All the things that affect the life cycle are also identified like which affect life cycles are predators disease these are the things which affect the life cycle these things are studied and improvements are done on those sectors by the wildlife managers or forest managers pva requires a detailed demography study of population and an analysis of its environment at the first step, demography is important, population counting, ratio of male is to female. If there is large number of male um, in a forest and only one female, then there is high chance of extinction. PVA has been described as marriage of ecology and statistics that bring together species characteristic and environment variability to forecast population health and extinction risks. It is considered as marriage of ecology and statistics. It is used to estimate the likelihood of population extinction and indicate the urgency of recovery effort and identify key life stages that should be focused for recovery effort. After the study, we can find out what factors are focus, uh, what factors are leading to the extinction of the species, whether they are predators, they are disease, environmental conditions, catastrophes like flood, fire. What are the things that are leading to extinctions? These things are studied and key efforts are made for the control of those factors. PPA is frequently used in endangered species management to develop a plan of action, rank the pros and cons of different management scenarios, and assess the potential impact of habitat loss. Mainly, it is used for the management of endangered species to find out advantage and disadvantage of management practices that have applied previously and it is also it also has to develop a plan of action suppose uh, in previous year we have adopted a plan and this year we will analyze whether that plan work effectively or not what are the pros and cons what are the advantages and disadvantages of that method, of that management practice? These things are analyzed by using PVA. 
The first rule of population probability analysis is let the data tell you which analysis to perform. After the analysis or assessment of the method, then we can identify which type of method will be suitable, which type of method will be perfect for that condition. If we have limited data, complex and mathematically sophisticated model make the analysis more illusory. Lack of data become complex for the management practice, so sufficient data is required for the analysis and assessment in this method. What affects PV? Demographic stochasticity, environmental stochasticity, catastrophes, genetic processes. These are the things which affect PVA. There are uh, certain steps. They are collect population data. Firstly, data should be collected such as population, size, size of certain species. Uh, suppose we are going to uh, we are going to um, count the population of endangered species we have to count uh, the ratio of males to female if there is more number of female than only one male then it will be difficult to protect the, those species or uh, species become extinct when the last individual dies some pair may produce several young in a single year while others may produce none of in the same year. So and this method will be repeated. This will be analyzed from year to year and carrying capacity, frequency and effect of threat. What are the effects of threat? What are hampering them? What is the carrying capacity of their habitat? These things will be collected at the first step. Step 2, put into PVA model package. These are Vortex, GAPPS, GAPS, RAMAS, RAMAS, ALEX, STELL, STELA. Then step 3 is analysis and predict extinction probability. What is the probability of extinctions? Can we find out after analyzing this step 1st, step 2nd and step 3rd? Here is a PVA model, bio, biology of individual, environmental factors, demography. By finding all these things, population survival or extinction rate, whether this population will survive or extinct, these things can be identified. What are the limitations of PVA? PVA models are necessarily incomplete. This, this doesn't provide the complete data. Complete reasons data should be reassessed periodically. As the as the population goes on changing, this will be re this will be reassessed periodically. Some species may produce several young in a single year, while some of them may not produce. So there is changing data. So this will be reassessed periodically. A small population will fluctuate enormously because of the random nature of birth and death. So reassessment of data is very important. So it is a difficult process. So this is a limitation of PVA model. Thank you.